I've lived in this apartment for just over a year now. The building was built in 1989. Uh, in Montreal at that time period, there wasn't a lot of construction happening. Other cities such as Toronto or Vancouver had a big construction boom at that time. Montreal was really not uh, in the same situation. So this is a rarity in the city of Montreal. The front entrance in this condo is extremely generous in scale and size. What I like very much is when you walk into this space, it takes you a moment to be in uh, this sort of, you know, private vestibule entry space. The entire apartment doesn't become apparent, it unfolds as you go. The triangle bench was an interesting design compromise. The original plans were to have the doors to the bedroom about 12 inches further in the other direction, leaving a space for a nice simple rectangle bench. When they did the demolition of the unit, the doors had to be pushed over. And I didn't want to let go of this idea of this bench. And so working with Shane in my office, who does a lot of the custom furniture design with me, I was like, why don't we do this sort of wedge-shaped bench? And uh, you know, he at first kind of looked at me like I had two heads. And when the piece arrived in the space, he was like, oh, okay, I see where you were coming from. He actually lovingly refers to that bench as the Dorito bench, which is kind of a funny, uh, <laughs> a funny story. The thing that attracted me most in this apartment is the orientation. We have a really nice amount of afternoon sunlight that comes in the unit. And the extra height gave me inspiration to what could be done with the space. The large sculpture that you see behind me um, was actually acquired several months after I moved into the apartment. I saw it in a gallery and the piece really spoke to me and I guess it's quite appropriate uh, when you see it in context. But the idea with this space in terms of angles and things like that, I really don't like the idea of condo spaces that are too grid-like and too square and too, you know, stuffy. So I really tried very hard with several elements in the living room. Uh, for example, the sofa is a boomerang-shaped sofa, so you have this obtuse angle that's formed by the sofa, which isn't your typical 90-degree sectional sofa. I think it opens up the space, it creates a very interesting conversation area. As well, the round carpet in the room also helped to form this area. I didn't want furniture lined all around the walls. I didn't want furniture to be, you know, stuffy and uh, stuck in space. So behind the sofa, for example, we have this wedge-shaped console that caused the sofa to naturally protrude from the wall, which gives a very nice, unexpected layout. As well, the window seat, that was another way to soften the space. You had this sort of postmodern bay window, which obviously you can't change in a condo space. And so by creating this window seat banquette, you have this very nice curve achieved from something that previously was not so attractive. I think it really made it into much more of an interesting space in the overall living room. The den was originally the second closed bedroom, which was something that I didn't require. I didn't need that from this space. So I did at the end of the living room, a set of custom made metal and glass doors that open into the den and it connected it. It really now has a den feel to it. The den doubles as a guest room. There's a very comfortable pull-out sofa bed. And I made the furniture easy to shuffle and move around. So when I have out-of-town guests um, or family who come here, they're here for a good time, not a long time, but uh, it works well for you know short stays with people in the city. The kitchen is a special space. Uh, in Quebec, we're very lucky because we have a lot of artisans who are you know, woodworkers, metal workers, and things like that. Uh, in my design firm, we do probably 90% of our furniture and millwork and things are custom made and made in Quebec. So the kitchen is sort of a showcase of that. An ebonist who I work with has done the cabinets, a uh, local lighting manufacturer has made the custom light, the island base and frame is made by a metal worker. All of the elements come together and harmonize and create what I feel is a very unique and interesting kitchen. The island was on legs. When the light comes in from the windows, you get this beautiful shadowed filtered effect and it gives it a sort of lightness. It makes the island feel more like furniture rather than a big block in the middle of the space. It's actually a Turkish marble. It's called Athion Violet. The dark veins in the marble is actually sort of a purplish wine color, which is not your typical gray run of the mill marble. 
I really love to collect things. I love to collect art, antiques, vintage things, sculpture, things of that nature. Rather than just be closed cabinets or dishes, it gave the kitchen an opportunity to act as a showcase for those elements, as though the kitchen was more of a flow through from the rest of the space and not choppy. I really don't like recessed lighting. I find it's never flattering. Yes, yes, pot lights, yes, the infamous, the infamous pot lights. The light is coming down, it creates strange shadows. When you're in the space, it never feels cozy and warm. So what I've done in this apartment, in the main living spaces, is avoided any sort of recessed lighting, and all of the space is done with cove lighting, up lighting, and indirect light sources. And I've also used those same cove elements in the kitchen. Instead of under counter lighting, I've done uh, cove as well. It gives a much warmer ambient light in the space and really creates something that I think is more interesting when you're living in the space than a more conventional lighting concept. I hate pot lights, can I say that? <laughs> so do I. The bedroom itself was far too big, so the size was reduced to still a very generous sized master bedroom, but the master bathroom was actually made larger. The master bathroom is done with a series of what you would call noble materials. There's terrazzo made with uh, natural marble pieces in it. The master bathroom vanity is walnut. Both bathrooms have curbless showers and we were lucky because there was enough space that you could do the proper slope for drainage in these showers. And it obviously took a very talented tile installer to come up with this, but it's really nice to have that seamless feel. I wouldn't say that it's a nod to the 80s, but I think that the idea of this more noble design element goes back a little bit to when uh, things were more abundant. You know, it's rare to find a marble slab like I've done in the kitchen and terrazzo and things like that in a more contemporary new builds. So I really wanted to turn up the volume on those elements because I find that that adds quality to a space and longevity, of course.